Hi, I'm Kate from Kate's Homeschool Math Help, and today I'm going to show you how to teach long division. Long division is often um, a particularly dreaded part of elementary math. I think that's mostly because it just has so many steps and incorporates so many skills, and it's very easy for kids to get lost in all of the steps. Um, but I'm going to show you a way to make it hands-on to help your child understand the steps and be able to do them fluently. Um, before you even attempt long division, though, there's three things that I recommend you make sure your child has totally solid. Um, first of all, make sure they understand the concept of division and that they can do it with small numbers. So, for example, a child should know that 24 divided by 3 equals 8 and that it means 24 objects being divided up among three people or 24 objects being divided um, into groups of three. So you should have that concept solid. Secondly, your child should make sure to have the multiplication facts solid. That's just one of those sub-skills that are essential for long division. And being able to subtract fluently is another key skill for understanding long division. Our brains only have so much working memory. They can only hold so many things in them at a time. And if they're devoting a lot of their working memory to any of these three things, the whole process of long division is going to be very difficult. Um, so today I'm going to show you both how to do long division and also why the long division algorithm works. First, I'm just going to walk, through, walk you through the usual algorithm. It might have been a while since you've studied it yourself. Um, and then we'll explore why it works with a hands-on way. So there's four steps to long division. First you divide, then you multiply, then you subtract, and then you bring down. And when a child is getting used to long division, I definitely suggest that you write these down on the paper or have your child write them down. You can put them on a sticky note that your child keeps near her math notebook, but it really helps to see these all written out. So to do this, let's say we have a problem like 78 divided by 3. So first we divide the tens. 7 divided by 3 equals 2. Then we multiply. 2 times 3 equals 6. Next we subtract. 7 minus 6 equals 1. And last, we bring down the 8. And I like to draw a little arrow there so that it's easy to see that it goes straight down. That's why I'm using this nice grid paper, too, to make it easy to keep track of all those. So, now that we've done these four steps, we go back to the beginning and start over. First, we divide. So 18 divided by 3 equals 6. Multiply. 6 times 3 equals 18. We subtract. 18 minus 18 equals 0. And there's nothing left to bring down, and we've discovered that there's nothing left over. All the 78 divided by 3 equals 26. But now let's get into the why. Why does this work? And to understand this, we are going to use Monopoly money. I'm going to get 7, we're going to do the same problem, 78 divided by 3. And we're going to follow the same steps. But we're going to make it more concrete and easier for kids to imagine and visualize so that they'll understand why all the steps work. So um, we're going to make this a problem about three kids dividing $78 among them. Maybe grandma stuck a whole lot of money in a Christmas card or something. And it helps even to have real names for the kids when you're doing this with kids. So we're going to have Hannah, Nora, and Aiden. And these are their three spots for their money. We'll move them over a little so we can fit our money in here. So let's count out $78. And the great thing about using Monopoly money like this is that it mirrors the place value in our, our number system. So I have seven tens, and I'm going to get eight ones here. Six, seven, eight. And so my stack of seven tens and eight ones mirrors the seven tens and the eight ones and seven eight. So, to divide the $78 among three kids, we'll start with the tens. We're going to um, first act it out with the money, and then we will record what we did. So seven tens divided by three equals two tens for everybody. It's so two tens for Hannah, two tens for Nora, and two tens for Aiden. And we have one ten left. Here's what that looks like on paper. First we divide. Seven divided by three equals two tens. That's how many each child got. 
2 times 3 equals 6. That's how many tenths we used up overall that we gave out. 7 minus 6 equals 1. That's how many tens we have left. And then we bring down these 8 1s that we haven't divided up yet. So now we have $18 to divide among the three children. Um, but I can't divide this 10 among the three of them. I need to trade it. So I'm going to take the 10 and I'm going to trade it for 10 1s. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so now we have 18 ones, and now we can divide these among the, the three children. So we have 18 divided by 3, so each child will get 6 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then 6 here for Aiden. So let's write down what we did. So first we divided. 18 divided by 3 equals 6 ones for each child. Multiply. 6 times 3 equals 18. That's the total number of ones that we gave out here. We subtract. 18 minus 18 equals 0. And there's nothing left to bring down. We've distributed all of the money. And there are no dollars left over. So that's a simple example with um, dividing a two-digit number by a small number. I purposely chose these because the, answer, the numbers are easy to divide. Um, they don't require too much complicated uh, multiplication or subtraction. Um, but now let's take a look at how this would work with a slightly more complex example. Let's move into the hundreds, and so we're going to need some hundreds here from our Monopoly money. So this time we're going to do $621 divided among five children. And so I'm going to take this money back here, and we're going to bring in some more children. We're going to add... John and Sam to the party here of distributing a whole bunch of money. So we need $621. So I'm going to count that out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Two tens for the 20. And one single dollar. So again, we're mirroring the place value here. 600, two tens, and one one. Again, I'm going to write down the steps so that it's easy to keep track of where we are. Divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. So to start with, we have six hundreds. We're going to divide these among the five children. Well, there's five kids and six hundreds, so each child gets one. So it looks like I counted out too many. So here we have one for, 100 for each child and 100 left over. So to record what we did, we'll say that each child got 100. That's the dividing. We multiply to see how many we gave out. 1 times 5 equals 5. We subtract to see how many are left. That's this 100 down here. And now we bring down the two tens. And we see now that we have... 100 and two more tens um, that still need to be divided up. But or another way to think of that is as 12 tens. But I can't cut this $100 bill in half, so I'm going to trade it for 10 tens. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So now I have 12 tens to um, pass out. And you can see here from where they are um, in place value that that's why these are 12 tens. This is the tens place, this is the hundreds place. And so this is 12 tens that need to be divided among the five children. So 12 divided by 5 equals 2. So I'm going to pass out two tens to each child. And I have two left. To record that, 12 divided by 5 equals 2. 2 times 5 equals 10. 12 minus 10 equals 2 tens left. And then I bring down the one $1 bill that I have here. Now, last time we were done at this point, but because we have a three-digit number, we need to keep going this time. Now we have $21 left that need to be divided among the five children. So now, 
I need to trade these two tens for one, so I need to get 20 ones. That'll take a second to count out, but it's worth it to have the hands-on visual here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So now we have twenty-one dollars left to divide up. We're dividing it among five children again, so 21 divided by 5 is $4 for each child. And as you do this with your child, it's kind of fun sometimes to use your kid's own name or their friends or siblings. Um, they love imagining giving them the money out to everybody. It's kind of fun to be the banker sometimes. Uh-oh, it looks like one of my ones stuck together here. But we gave 4 to... That's one problem with Monopoly money. It does stick together. So $21 split among five children. Um, each child gets $4. That's the divide step. We multiply 4 times 5 to see how many dollars we gave out. That's $20. Subtract to see how many dollars are left, and that's this dollar. And then there's nothing left to bring down at this point. We've divided the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. There is a dollar left, which is a great uh, follow-up question for your child to think about what you do with that last dollar. But you can see that this way of showing children long division helps them understand the process. They learn how to follow the procedure fluently and get a lot of practice with the steps. But it also helps them to understand why we do all of these things.